In this video, I'll show you how to set up a community or a digital experience site for use with Scratch Orgs in Salesforce. So what we have here is an SFDX, an empty SFDX project that has already been authorized to access a dev hub. So in this case, it's a developer org that I have enabled the dev hub uh, functionality. And the first step is to modify the project scratch def.json. So this is the file that determines what features are turned on in scratch orgs that we create. So in this case, we need to make sure the addition is set to enterprise. And that's because the enterprise license will give us a guest user license that the community or the experience cloud site, whichever <laughs> vocabulary you use, uh, needs in order to function. Uh, so along with the addition, we have to add the community feature And we have to add a couple of settings that go along with that. And we're going to say community settings. And the first setting we need is enable networks enabled. And set that to true. And one more setting. We also need experience bundle settings. And we need to set, we need to enable experience bundle metadata. We need to turn that on. We we'll use the experience cloud bundling mechanism. Okay. So effectively, changing this JSON file means that when we create scratch orgs, they will already have the digital experience uh, setting enabled so we can. Um, then deploy our, our source code that has the digital experience that or the community uh, to directly to that, that org without having to go in and, and flip anything and set up. So it's pretty convenient. Okay, so now that that's created, let's go to our command palette, control shift P and create a default scratch org. And we're going to use that JSON file we just modified. And we will call this uh, source org because this is the scratch org that we're going to use to build our initial site that we'll then pull down. So we'll call this the source org and I'll set this to expire after one day. Okay, now that we have a scratch org created, we will open that org and go uh, through the UI and create our the actual experience site. So let's go to open default org And here we are into the scratch org. We're going to set up. And in the search bar and setup, I usually type all sites. All sites. And if we hadn't changed our scratch org config file, this wouldn't be available. We'd have to go through setup and, and turn it on. So we'll click on all sites. And we'll create a new site. And in this case, we're going to use the customer service template, the Aura template. But the instructions for all of this should work the same with the LWR sites. Select like customer service because it's a very popular template and we'll say get started. Now for the name, uh, we want to avoid using spaces in the name. So really a one word name, and if you need two words, put an underscore between the two words. Spaces, the UI will take it, but later when you're doing the push and the pull, uh, it'll get very angry. If you're supposed to do a code, or the, the Salesforce CLI won't like that there's spaces in the file names and things like that. So make sure everything is one continuous word, no spaces. So in this case, we're just gonna call this demo. And I'll add it to the URL just for completeness. And we'll create. And this section will take just a second. OK, so the site's been created. Now, the first thing to note is let's go to the builder and look at the, the default uh, home page of the template. 
And one thing to note, when you first create this site, you want to make a change to the site so that when we pull it down, if you, for some reason, if you don't change something on the site, when you first do your first pull, it won't pull all of the files that define the site. And I'm not really sure why, but it is the case. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change the title from welcome to uh, hello world, which is more, you know, for computer science, software development, that's more correct for your initial, <laughs> uh, your initial title anyway. Okay. I'll say this is a, a demo site for demonstrating use with scratch. How about if I can spell scratch? Scratch orgs. So now that we've made that change, the next thing that's interesting is if we go back to the, uh, the administration section, the email templates are a problem. So when we do the pull, the there are four email templates that are attached to this uh, this template, and the pull will not pull down the default email templates. So what we're gonna have to do is go into uh, the classic email templates and clone these four email templates that are assigned here, and then come back to this administrator page and assign the clone templates to the website so that when we pull them down, the clone templates come down. So it's a little, a little quirky, but bear with me. So those are the four email templates. And what we're gonna do is go back to, to our setup And we're going to go to the classic email templates because the lightning email templates don't work for this, as far as I know. Classic email templates. And the four are change passwords. So this is one of them. We're going to clone this one. And I will rename this demo to differentiate it from the existing template. We'll save that. Find our next one, which is the, uh, let's see, forgot password email. Clone this, change the name. Save that, two down, two to go. We also need the new member welcome email, clone that, a name, save that, one more. We also need the headless reset password email, clone that and rename. Okay, so now that we've saved that, let's go back to the administration section of our site and set these email templates to our cloned versions. So actually, let me look, forgot password. So I need the forgot password, that one there. I need the change password email, that one there. Scroll down. Oh, I could have sworn the welcome email was, oh, here it is, sorry, ha, I missed it, there it is. The welcome email is there. New member welcome email, it's at the top. And last but not least, the headless, forgot password email, which is right here. So let's save that. Okay. So after that, we've covered all our bases in creating the experience site or the community uh, in the UI. So let's go back to our Visual Studio code, which is now pointing to that source org. And let's go to the command palette and pull the source files down. So pull source from default scratch org. Okay, now you can see that we have the files that represent our website. So if we go to experiences, I've got all these pages or all these files 
Now, if I go down to the home page on the views, there's a JSON file that represents the home page view. And you can see that the text that we changed shows up in here. So this is the JSON that represents the site or the, this collection of files that represent the site we just created in the UI. So all of, the, of that is great. So now that we have those files, we should be able to test this and prove that this works by creating another scratch org and deploying to that org. So if we go up to our command palette and create a default scratch org using our same JSON file, and we're going to say target org. It's the target of our deployment, said to expire after one day. And let that run for just a second. OK, so now we have another org that doesn't yet have the, <laughs> the site, but it does have the digital experience enabled setting turned on. We should be able to push our source to that new org. So if we say push source to default scratch org, now this will actually fail because there's one more step that I haven't done yet, but I want to show you the error first and then show you the solution to the error so you know why you're doing it. I would have done that for some of the other things that you need to do in the UI to pull down first, but it would be much, the video would be too long if I did it that way. So in this case, it's pretty easy to demonstrate the error and the solution. So that's how we'll do it. Okay, failed to run. I've got one problem. And that problem is there's an error in the app switcher meta. So really, we just need to ignore this file. So if you're familiar with Git, uh, you, there's a git ignore file. So you have files that you ignore. You have git ignore so that you don't end up pushing changes to that file or committing changes to that file. It's just something you want git to ignore. Well, Salesforce has the same thing. It's called a force ignore. So we need to add the app switcher file, this one that's uh, this default file that it won't push up, but we're just using the default anyway in the org, so we don't need to, to maintain changes with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this file uh, to our force ignore, the so app switcher. And specifically, we just want this one file. So app switcher dot app menu dash meta dot xml just like it says right here we're just adding that file so if i save that then we go back to our command palette and we push again now the kind of the the mechanism is ignoring that file the salesforce cli is ignoring that file in the push commands and it'll ignore that file in the pull commands as well or ignore that file in the pull commands Okay, so now we've pushed the site to our new org, our, our uh, target org. So if we go open, since the target org is now our default, we can say open default org. And we can go see that our, let's close other tabs just to not confuse ourselves. We can see that the site is now available in the target org as well. Oops, not notifications moved on me. So we got to set up and go to all sites. And there's our demo site. If I go to builder. We should see the modified text on the home view, the home page. And there it is, hello world. So we have a digital experience site that we can deploy to scratch orgs, or for that matter, we can deploy this to um, any kind of org really. Uh, and then the nice thing is we have it in file form. So now that we have pulled it down, 
and tested it, we can push it to GitHub. So what I'm, go what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to source control here and I'm going to say publish to GitHub. And I'll just leave it called demo site and we're going to make this a public repository on my GitHub account. And ah, okay, so let's not include some of these files here. The rest of those look good. We don't want the SF or the SFDX folders. So we'll say, okay. And it's gonna publish the branch all in one shot. Let's go look at that on GitHub. And there we are. We have the site published on GitHub. Uh, you can go clone this site as an example for your own digital experience sites. And I'll put the link to this uh, repository in the description of the video. As always, thank you for watching.